Common Prayer on page 355. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. to see you in your one and eternal glory, O Father, who, with the Son and the Holy Spirit, live and reign, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated as we now hear a word from sacred scripture. A reading from the book of Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him, each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to the other and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots of the threshold shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me! I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, Now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed, and your sin is blotted out. 
Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did, you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, 
if in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered him, are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. On Thursday, I celebrated the 15th anniversary of being ordained a priest of Jesus Christ. And within that 15-year period, on the numerous occasions that I've had to preach on Trinity Sunday, which is today, I've always tried to sidestep the responsibility. I always started off by joking about it, how preachers don't ever want to touch the Trinity, want to talk about the Trinity. Talk, uh, I've always make the joke about how I, uh, I got a D in Trinitarian theology in seminary, which is true. It's not a made-up story. And so I, I was kind of approached this day and preaching this day with a little bit of nervousness and hesitation. Uh, theologian Carl Rahner said that we preachers and theologians, we speak haltingly about the Trinity. And it's true. 
We all get a little nervous. I mean, even, even just in your, in your common everyday experiences as a Christian, if you have those in your life who may not necessarily subscribe to Christianity or don't fully understand or comprehend Christianity, they might ask you, well, what is the Trinity? How do you explain this three-in-one thing? And it's like, oh, deer in headlights, right? I mean, you're just kind of like, like ah, I don't know how to explain that. Get the priest on the phone. And then the priest is busy. He doesn't want to answer that question, right? But I've really been praying this week about the nature of the Trinity, and I don't want to approach it haltingly or reservedly or make a big joke out of it, because really the Trinity is the foundation, the cornerstone of our belief system as Christians. I began in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. There are some in our church and other churches who want to replace that language of family because they're afraid it may offend some. They want to replace it with something like, in the name of the Creator, the Redeemer, and the Sanctifier. Well, that simply says what God does and says nothing about who God is. You know, we get a, a lot of children who come to visit grandparents here and always like to meet the little kids. And I, I love to hear what kids call their grandparents, what names they've given them and how they've evolved. And so I might squat down and I might say, so, so welcome, it's good to see you. Who is this to you? Now, if the child looked at me and said, oh, this, this is the lady that gets me ice cream. <laughs> or this is the man who lets me stay up late at night and watch whatever I want on TV. Ugh, yeah. <laughs> Not anything bad, just, you know, watching TV. Uh, let's change it up. Uh, this is the person who lets me play all the games on my iPhone that I want to play. You know, there's no, there's no limits. Um, that identifies what the person does for them. And if I were to push further, and if I were to say, well, well who is this person to you? And they just shrugged their shoulders and said, I, I, I don't know. It's the person that buys me ice cream. And that the relationship between grandchild and grandparent is limited simply and solely to what the person does for the little child. Then there's something that's broken within that relationship. But if that child with great wonderment looks at me and says, oh, this is, this is EIO, or Bop Bop, or Momo, or Papa. I'm from the South, we have Momos and Papas. Then there's, there's a level of relationship, there's an intimacy that's there because the child has identified who the individual is, not what the individual does. And so it is with the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Says something about who God is. When Jesus gives the Great Commission at the end of the Gospel of Matthew, which is not part of our lectionary readings today, and Jesus says to the disciples at the beginning of the church, go therefore and baptize all nations Baptize them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Not, not, mind you, in the names of, but in the name of. Jesus is giving us a Trinitarian theology that's very clear and explicit. It is very implicit in many Old Testament texts, including the one that we read today, where the Lord says through Isaiah, whom shall we send? Or actually, it's whom shall go for us? Whom shall go for us? Right? It's also in the creation story when hum humanity is being created. Let's make someone, let's make something in our image. So even before the revelation of Jesus Christ on earth, there was already this sense of a plurality of God. And yet a singleness, a oneness in God. Even the Hebrew word Elohim, the I am, represents a plurality of God. And so we get tripped up and we start to say, well, I don't know how there's three in one or one in three. And we think about St. Patrick using the, the, the clover leaf and, and those kinds of things. We might even point them to the, uh, to the Nicene Creed and say, well, there it identifies who God the Father, who Jesus the Son, and who the Holy Spirit is. We use language like uh, persons and substances. We say uh, light from light, right? So if I were to take a candle and I were to hold that candle to this flame and then pull that candle away, 
I'd have two flames. And if I put that flame back with this flame, they, all, they become one. They're in, inseparable and indistinguishable from each other. I am suddenly consciously aware that the first time my mother-in-law ever heard me preach, I used this image at Holy Rosary in Cinema. <laughs> so you're getting a repeat performance, Grammy. <laughs> Think of it this way. This church, we're all in church, right? Even the choir back here is in church, right? All the way back here. I never get to see them. See, now they're waking up. <laughs> we have this box that has this gold cross on top of it. It's called a tabernacle. And when we're done with Holy Eucharist and we have some of the elements of Christ left over, we put it in the tabernacle. So that is a very sacred place. In the ancient tradition, when Moses was coming through the desert and they built a tabernacle, there was an area where the sacrifices were made, there was an area for prayer, and then there was an area where the Ark of the Covenant was held called the Holy of Holies. And it was believed that that's where God dwelt. God, the big sense of God. And we believe that God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in the elements of Holy Eucharist, are here. And so that this is a very holy and sacred space. But so is this space. This space, where in just a moment we will pray prayers. I get to say them, but you pray them in your hearts, minds, and souls along with me. And the Holy Spirit pierces time and space and comes among us and changes mere bread and wine into the body and blood of Jesus Christ. So that God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit dwelling in the tabernacle, the Holy of Holies, God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is here on this altar. And then you receive that body of Christ. This sanctuary lamp is lit. The light of Christ the light of the world, the light that God created, the beginning of time, represents the presence of God in the tabernacle. On Good Friday, when the tabernacle is empty, guess what? We blow that candle out. When you receive the body and blood of Christ, you become a living tabernacle, such that each and every one of us should get one of those. And in fact, we do at our baptism. You should walk around with a sanctuary lamp. <laughs> Go to work with your sanctuary lamp. I'm a tabernacle. The living God dwells within me. So these are holy places in the same building. And then this is a holy place from which we hear the proclamation of the word of God inspired by the Holy Spirit from sacred scripture. And it goes out to you all in the transept to you all in the nave here. And it dwells within you. And it becomes part of you. And you live it out. And so that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is present here within each and every one of you, within each and every one of us. It is quite an amazing thing that God would present himself as a relationship, as a family, if you take one element of the Trinity away, remove God the Father, it all collapses. Remove Jesus the Son and just leave God the Father and the Holy Spirit. It doesn't work. Remove the Holy Spirit and we are left abandoned. But God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is with us in totality, in unity. God is in and of himself a relationship, a divine relationship, a divine family. And what do good families do? Good, healthy, holy families. They love. They love not just one another, but they radiate love from their home to those in need and to their neighbors, always willing and ready to give a hand. Love. What else do families do? Families eat together. And that's what we do here each and every Sunday. Families celebrate with one another. We have high school graduates today. We've got family in, my own family in from out of town. 
to celebrate Caroline's graduation. There were other visitors earlier uh, this morning who were here at 8 o'clock. The Lust family has a bunch of people in from out of town for Nick's graduation. I mean, it's such a, such a blessing that families celebrate together. What else do families do? Families stick together through hard times. Those, those times that are difficult. Jesus says from the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus the Son leaning on God the Father. Today is a bittersweet day. Because in one hand, we have a great celebration of 40 years of ministry. And in the other hand, the grief and the sadness that comes with retirement. Joanne has sat behind that organ for 40 years, sharing her prayer to God with us. See, we get to, you, we, we, those of you in the pews and those of us up here, you know, our, our prayer to God is really private and it's quiet and it's silent. But Joanne's prayer for 40 years has been grand. And it's been for your prayer and for your benefit. And her family is here supporting her and loving her. It is a bittersweet moment. We're not saying goodbye. It's not a funeral for crying out loud. But there is sadness as our family structures change and roles evolve, and things, things progress. And we love Joanne, and so we're going to have a huge celebration of her 40 years of ministry following this service in the parish hall. And I hope that after we process out today, that you will relish the opportunity to hear her glorious postlude. Families love one another, and do things for one another, and sacrifice for one another. It's what Jesus did for all of us, the human family. So, my brothers and sisters in Christ, I don't know if I've been able to answer any of your questions about the Trinity. I don't know if I can send you out with any really good little snippets of something to say to somebody about who or what the Trinity is. But what I would want you to do is to walk away from here thinking about the Trinity in terms of relationship. And every relationship that we have flows out of that divine relationship, the relationship that is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In the first 300 years of the Christian Church, there was great confusion about the nature of Jesus and the Holy Spirit and who God the Father was. And so in 325, at the Council of Nicaea, the Nicene Creed was composed to help define our faith. Let us turn to page 358 and let us stand and proclaim to the world what it is that we believe as Christians. First and foremost, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in the one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, Amen. For our sins, 
we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. That there may be justice and peace on earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light and perpetual shine on them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. We pray for all graduates this day, O Lord, that they may be kept safe, happy, and holy in your light. We pray for families, that they may be strengthened in the bond of unity and love. We give you thanks, O Lord, for revealing yourself as a holy trinity to us, that we may reflect that nature of love and relationship unto the world. We give thanks, O Lord, for Joanne, and the glory and the joy that she has shared with us, and the gift of her musical talents and abilities, and ask that you continue to strengthen her, O Lord, and that she may know of the love that we have for her as a member of your family, our family. <laughs> And now, on the gold bookmark in your Book of Common Prayer, we pray together for the election of a bishop. Almighty God, giver of every good gift, look graciously on your church, on all those who are discerning a potential call, and on the people of God in this diocese. And so guide the minds and hearts of those who shall come to you, Bishop of the Diocese of South Dakota, that we may receive a faithful pastor who will care for our people and equip us for our ministries. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If you turn to page 360 for the confession of our sins, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Mighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, and strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to any and all visitors who may be with us, especially those who may be from out of town. 
we have, just as you walk into our front door, um, a map that we put every tourist season. Actually, I shouldn't say every. This is our second one, so now it's every. Um, <laughs> And so if you take a moment as you travel through uh, Rapid City in Emanuel, you're invited to put a little pin where you're from. And so as you move about your travels, we will continue to pray for all of you, for your safety, uh, for your literal, physical journey, but also prayers for your spiritual journey as well. Tomorrow is Memorial Day, and so we do remember those who have sacrificed themselves for the good of peace in the world, and we ask that God bless those families who continue to grieve and mourn those losses. And we ask that God give us peace in our world, that we may move beyond a day when we have to remember those killed in active duty. We pray for the safety of those who are serving this day and that they may be kept safe and free from all harm. I wanted to point out also and thank that this family, this Emanuel family, is really, really incredible. And yesterday is an example of one of those days when there was a buzz of activity all over the campus. There were guys that were in the back moving parking bumpers, taking the old ones out, putting the new ones in. There have been people who volunteered to paint parking lot stripes on all three parking lots. There's just been so much work there that was done. And then yesterday, in anticipation of our gathering of, of great Thanksgiving for Joanne's um, ministry, uh, there were a lot of, of folks here in the kitchen that were buzzing around and a lot of positive energy. And there are so many things that happen in Emmanuel behind the scenes that people don't always see. And one of the great joys of being the rector, the priest here at Emmanuel, is being able to see behind the scenes all of the things that so many of you offer and provide. I cannot thank you enough for the way in which you so lovingly share your gifts and your talents, from the vestry who has to make very difficult decisions, um, all the way to those who cut the grass and, and, and uh, come in here and clean up when nobody's looking. So thank you from the bottom of my heart for being such an incredible model of the Trinitarian relationship of love. The final thing, I know that Joanne's at the organ and so she's getting ready to do the offertory hymn, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna have her come forward. We'll do this um, at the, in the parish hall. But I just wanted to make sure that everyone saw. We're, we're going to offer her uh, this James Van Nuys print uh, that we went over to him and he actually signed it himself. And um, we are asking that all of you take a moment at the reception to uh, inscribe a note of thanks and appreciation and to sign it uh, and so that we can send this forth with Joanne. Now, my hope and my prayer is that Joanne will continue to uh, play back up, will play at weddings and funerals, and, um, and will just come in and, and play whenever she feels like it during the week, um, as she does when she's practicing and rehearsing. That, um, that I just want to assure everyone that Joanne's not going away, as, as far as I'm concerned. Um, we're just moving into a different phase of life at Emmanuel. And um, I do want to acknowledge and thank you, Joanne, and I hope you feel loved more than anything today. to the Lord the honor due his name, bring offerings and come into his courts.
44 years of wedded bliss, you said? <laughs> How fantastic. You guys are wonderful. Oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send therefore your blessing upon these, your servants, that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. 44 years, you probably finally got one of your one, right? <laughs> All right, we'll give it another year. <laughs> oh, which anniversary? Eight. Eight years, fantastic. Oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it has represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send therefore your blessing upon these your servants, that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You finally got her where you want her, right? <laughs> For safe travel. Is this the is this the going? Okay, well, we will certainly miss you all and we thank you for sharing your ministries with us. And Connie, we pray that you feel you begin to feel better. Oh God, our Heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation and whose presence we find wherever we go. Preserve those who travel, surround them with your loving care, protect them from every danger, and bring them in safety to their journey's end. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you all. Lord, wash away my iniquities. Cleanse me of my sins. Thank you. We continue in the Red Book of Common Prayer on page 361. The Lord be with you. Also lift up your hearts. We lift to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and grace. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. For with your co-eternal Son and Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, in trinity of persons and in unity of being. And we celebrate the one and equal glory of you, O Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you and your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. <coughs> After supper he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. 
Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. God will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the peace. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. It is a great joy in the Episcopal Church to welcome all those who are baptized in the Trinity of Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, regardless of denomination, you are all invited and welcome to receive Holy Communion at our altar, to be part of this one family and to share in this meal as families of love so, so often do. I would ask your pardon and forgiveness if I may not have consecrated quite enough of the wine. Um, this is my first Eucharist without Deacon Virginia here. I, I feel like I'm flying blind, frankly. And uh, mother, excuse me, mother, well, right, yes, mother of Virginia, thank you for the correction. Um, so we'll, we'll work through this. It'll get better by the end of summer, I promise.
We have the sending forth of the Eucharistic visitors. That commission can be found in your bulletin, which we <coughs> proclaim together. In the name of the people of Emmanuel, we send you forth bearing these holy gifts. That those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ's body and blood. We who are many are one body, because we all share one bread. Our post-communion prayer can be found on page 365 in the Book of Common Prayer. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you, with the glad and sorrow, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of the Trinitarian God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you for eternity. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.